Okay, these are the three biggest mistakes that I see beginners in cybersecurity making when they're trying to break into cyber and this is holding you back. So listen up. Every person you talk to is going to have different opinions about how to start a career in cybersecurity, whether it's based on their experience, what they've seen, people they've talked to, their mentors, everything. Obviously, there's going to be anomalies with people who break into cybersecurity with zero experience, zero certifications, but there are also a lot of people who have all the experience, all the certifications, and still can't get a job. And this is just me sharing my two cents as someone who is very much involved in looking at the cybersecurity job market for the last six years, looking for hiring trends, talking to recruiters, talking to hiring managers, etc. The first mistake on this list is starting your entry-level career in cybersecurity. Now, hear me out on this. If you've seen any of my previous videos, then you know that I did break into cybersecurity through a entry-level cybersecurity rotational program that was made specifically for entry-level professionals and I got this job offer back in 2018. However, it is now 2025, seven years later, so there's a lot that's changed. Back then, yes, even just seven years ago, which sounds like a long time, but it really doesn't feel like that long, it was much easier to get an entry-level cybersecurity job. This was before everything that happened in 2020. This is before all of the tech layoffs. This is before AI had this huge boom in the last few years. So in general, yes, it was easier to get an entry-level cybersecurity job back then. And nowadays, when you hear people talk about entry-level cybersecurity jobs, they're mostly saying things like, oh, it doesn't, they don't exist. You can't get an entry-level job in cybersecurity. You can't break into cybersecurity at all. There's no jobs available, which I want to first say is not true. But I will say that it is significantly harder to start a career in cybersecurity in 2025 as an entry-level professional. And this is what you should do instead. Start your career out first in IT and help desk. Now, I know not everyone wants to hear that their dream career is one door behind another career, but hear me out. IT and help desk is one of the most entry-level jobs in tech in general, but the thing is, it's still a very, very technical role. For example, even if you're helping customers troubleshoot issues, if you're learning how to configure firewalls, if you're looking at user permissions or, or identity access management, there's so many things that go into IT help desk that are also directly transferable to a cybersecurity job. So no, you're not wasting time by starting your career first in IT help desk and then transferring into cybersecurity. In fact, you're probably hiring your chances by multiple degrees if you start your career in IT and then pivot into cybersecurity because yes, you'll already have work experience and Honestly, there's just a lot more entry-level IT jobs out there, so it'll be a lot easier for you in the job market to actually apply to jobs that are relevant to your experience compared to looking for the few and far between entry-level cybersecurity jobs nowadays that can be really hard to find, especially considering the job boards nowadays that we're using. I'm talking about Indeed, I'm talking about Monster.com, and I'll also go into those later on in this video, but if you're trying to get into cybersecurity in 2025, start in IT first, start in networking, start in help desk, and then pivot your way into cybersecurity. And the best beginner IT course that can literally get you from no experience to actually hired with an IT job offer is the Course Careers IT course taught by Josh Matacor. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with him, but this is one of the most hands-on practical courses I've seen for IT professionals where you actually get to work with Active Directory, an active ticketing system, troubleshooting actual IT issues and getting some real hands-on experience all within this one technical course. They also provide a free intro course and you can also get $50 off the entire IT course using the link in my description. So I'll link that below if you're interested in checking that out. Plus not to mention, if you guys have been following along the World Economic Forum's Future of Jobs 2025 report, this was recently released on their list of the fastest growing skills by 2030. Of course, number one is going to be AI. Definitely no surprise there. But number two is actually networks and cybersecurity. So this means globally, internationally, cybersecurity is the second fastest growing skill in terms of skill gaps, in terms of hiring. So no, it is not too late to break into cybersecurity in 2025. I've been getting this question a lot. And, and if anything, I really think it is just the beginning of what is needed from a cybersecurity, from a GRC compliance standpoint to manage all the new technology that is coming out and being created by AI tools and AI wrappers and everything revolving around big data and AI. All right, the second biggest mistake I see beginners making in cyber is just getting stuck in that job application loop of cold applying to jobs on Indeed, on Monster.com, on these big job platforms that Honestly, we don't even know what percentage of these jobs are real and what percentage of them are ghost jobs. And I've shared this in another video, but I've had a recent conversation with someone who is in the hiring space who shared with me that basically recruiters and headhunters will have a job listing that they're trying to fill and they'll go on these job sites like Indeed and list the job on there to get potential candidates. And sometimes they're really just collecting candidate information. They want to store resumes for future jobs. Sometimes they're just creating a job application to create feelers for a job to see how many people would be interested. And a lot of times if there is a real job, they may never actually 
actually remove it from Indeed and the job listing could be on there for weeks, even months after the job listing may have already been filled. Honestly, it's just a really bad practice and I personally have never heard anything back from the hundreds of job applications that I personally sent out on Indeed and all these bigger job platforms. So I would highly recommend avoiding those if you can, especially the easy applies, the one-click applies on both platforms. Those are really such a bait because it makes thousands, tens of thousands of people apply to one job opening. Chances are your job application is probably never going to get looked at by a human, which honestly really sucks. And I know a lot of you guys also asked me about LinkedIn. Personally, I have used LinkedIn to look for jobs, but my main thing with LinkedIn is that their search feature really sucks when it comes to jobs because I can whittle it down to cybersecurity jobs, but they'll still show me jobs that are irrelevant to me when it comes to certain tutoring roles. So personally, while I will still use LinkedIn to look for jobs that are relevant, it really is just me digging through 10 jobs and finding one that's relevant to me or one that's actually a good job listing. But again, they typically will also have hundreds and thousands of people applying to that one job application. But the good thing about LinkedIn is the fact that sometimes in the job listings, the hiring manager that listed the job or the recruiter can attach their profile to the job listing. So if you find a job listing that is relevant to you, like a cybersecurity analyst role, and there is a recruiter's name attached to it, just, I would directly click on their profile, send a connection request with a personalized message, telling them a little bit about your experience, not, you know, paragraphs, but just a few sentences saying who you are, your, a little bit about your background, and also to let them know that you've applied to this job. So at least then your name will be remembered by them. So when they are eventually looking through the candidate resumes, your name will stand out because they've seen it before. And it, trust me, very few people do this. And I've actually seen this play out in a successful job offer story on LinkedIn where someone did this exact thing and reached out to the hiring manager and thanked them for the opportunity and just let them know that they applied for the job listing. And they ended up getting the offer after going through a few rounds of interviews. So it definitely does work. And now these are the two things I recommend you to do instead of applying on those really big job boards. The first job board I recommend is Massive and it is basically a job board that pulls jobs directly from company job portals. So you know it's not a ghost job and there's actually a real job listing behind the job listings that you see on the portal. And they also have an AI auto reply that'll customize your resume to every single job listing that you send it out to, which Honestly, that's pretty insane. And it will help you apply to 200 jobs a month that are actually relevant to your experience, your background, and what you're looking for. They add jobs on a regular basis. So there's always going to be jobs that are relevant to you. So it's basically just a set it and forget it autopilot kind of thing where this AI bot is constantly in the background helping you apply to jobs. And if you're currently in the cybersecurity job market and have seen how long it takes to send out a job application, especially with a customized resume, by the way, it takes me at least 10 to 15 minutes to send out one job application. So to send out 200 a month, that is more than most people would send out in a few months. So I personally highly recommend it. This service does cost money, so, so I would only recommend it if it's within your budget, but if it is, I really do think it's really, really worth it. And I also have them linked in my description if you're interested in checking it out. The second job board I recommend is smaller tech-focused job boards. The one that I really recommend is built-in. That is where I found my last cybersecurity job. So. Personally, I'm very fond of it because it actually got me a job. And they typically have a pretty diverse set of jobs. Back then it was a lot of smaller companies and startups, but now there's actually bigger companies on there as well. So you can definitely find at least a few job listings that are relevant to you. But I will say that their number of entry-level jobs and early career jobs are definitely not as high as their senior level roles that they're hiring for. All right, mistake number three on this list is getting too many cybersecurity certifications. And you may be asking yourself, is there such a thing as too many cybersecurity certifications? Yes, yes there is. I get tons of messages daily from you guys through LinkedIn, on Discord, and the thing that I see, especially on Discord, is typically the ones with multiple acronyms, alphabet soup behind their name, with three, four, five certifications on their profile, and they're not sure why they're unable to find a job in cybersecurity. And the main reason is because I feel like cybersecurity as a sector is doing beginners dirty because they make us think that we need to get all these certifications, all these these acronyms behind our name, and that'll be what gets us a job. And that simply is just not true. While it is to an extent important, it's not going to be, you know, 100%, 90%, even 70, 60% of what'll get you the job. If anything, the most important things that you'll need to get a job in cybersecurity are number one, yes, certifications, but there is a limit to them. You can't just get three to five certifications and think that's all you'll need to get a job. It's, it doesn't work that way. But number two, technical cybersecurity projects. A lot of people skip on this step because they think certifications is enough. And number three, networking, a lot of networking. And this could be in conferences, this could be on LinkedIn, this could be at B-Sides. Heck, this could be in a Discord channel. By the way, shameless plug for our Discord channel, link in my description, it is free. 
feel free to join us. We would love to have you. It's really about, yes, getting the certifications, the credentials, also about getting the hands-on experience through those projects. And then finally, it's also about putting yourself out there through networking, through meeting people, through connecting with others, through actual engagement and communication with the cybersecurity community and not just expecting a job to be thrown your way if you have the Security Plus and a few other cool certifications that people know of. Well, I do recommend at least getting your Security Plus and maybe one to two more certs, one to two more max, by the way, for the most part, if you have that, then your next step is to get a really strong cybersecurity technical project portfolio. Now, I've made a video on this. I've also made a video on creating your own cybersecurity home lab. That's a great place to start. I'll link all those project guides and beginner videos down in my description, but I highly recommend getting hands-on experience because that's really what you're going to be talking about during a cybersecurity interview to get the interviewer's attention. If you're going to answer, not just sharing the base foundational knowledge, but also sharing how you've implemented things, how you've taken that knowledge and actually done something with it, actually created a project, actually got hands-on experience, actually learned how to use a tool or a cybersecurity skill set that is what's going to impress a cybersecurity interviewer. All right, so that is it for this video. I think I've yapped for a very long time. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below. If you have any other mistakes that you think beginners are making in cyber, if you've gotten into cyber in the last few years, we'd love to hear your experience and any advice you might have for the rest of the audience, for the rest of the community. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll link all the resources I mentioned in the video in my description as always. If this video was helpful, please consider liking and subscribing as it really does help out the channel. Don't forget to stay connected on LinkedIn, on Instagram, on Discord. I'm usually on those platforms almost every single day, so feel free to connect with me on there. I post videos weekly and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!